Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at some time domain based effects in sample wrench. This would include echo, reverb, chorus, and flanging. I've got our favorite little thing set up here, queued up. Let's give a listen to it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Now, the functions we're going to be looking at, you're going to find under the effects menu. And the first one we're going to look at is echo, which is a fairly sort of obvious effect, which essentially makes copies of the sound, delays them in time, and just overlays them. So let's start off with a single slap echo. And we'll just sit OK over here, right? So we're going to look at a bunch of these presets. But for now, this, uh, this single slap echo will be pretty good. And you'll actually be able to see what happens to the sound file itself. Right, see how it gets much thicker. Now let's give it a listen. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, so you can see how thick that is by comparison. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Now let's take a look at some other ones here. And uh, in this case, I'll just use the preview so that you can see a little bit more quickly what's going on here. So here what we've done is we've extended out the uh, time delay a little bit. And then feedback is how much this sound literally is fed back to the input. So if we have a high feedback, we get a lot of echoes. And then the loudness is the, um, the literally the loudness of the echoes as they go through. So the first echo that goes through is going to be at 66%. And the second echo, controlled by feedback, will be 66% of the 66%. And it just keeps on working like that. So you can see if this is very high, if the loudness is very high, it's going to take a long time for these echoes to die out. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? So if we turn that down, turn the loudness down. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All righty, getting an idea. If we extend out the time delay itself, the spacing on these is going to be increased. I'll bring that loudness back up a little bit. What about what the job displacement market, 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 market in the city of the future? The of the future. Alrighty. If you go extreme with this, you can get something that sort of sounds robotic. So here we have a fairly short delay time of only 30 milliseconds, very high feedback. So we're going to get a lot of echoes and they're not going to die out very quickly because this is at 50%. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay. So you can do a lot with this echo. You know, just play around with these things and you can see exactly what you get. If you know, we crank this up, it's kind of going to turn into a mud. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Just gets a little crazy. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at chorus and flange. So these are kind of similar in that they're a, a copy, right? A copy in time that is overlaid, added to the original. But these times tend to be much shorter and the uh, time is not held constant. We can sweep it back and forth. This is how quickly it's going to sweep, and then this is how far, what the variation within that is. So let's just do a general purpose over here. Depending on the source material, this can range from subtle to extreme. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? So that has a definite sound quality difference to it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? We can make that, as I said, a little bit more extreme. 
if you increase the sweep depth, you'll, you'll hear more pitch shifting. I'll just use the preview. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? If you slow, uh, excuse me, if you um, crank up the sweep speed so it's changing much faster, this will be even more apparent. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay. Crank up the depth. Get some more feedback in here. Crank up the loudness a little bit. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? It's starting to get a little weird. So we've got some very weird presets in here. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? There are those really weird sort of swishing noises in the background. Now, on a musical instrument source, that's going to have a completely different effect than it does on voice. Similar is flange. So this is a very popular effect on guitar, um, sometimes on keyboards. On voice, it has its own sort of quality, I guess. So let's just do this thing called deep flange here. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Right, it has this sort of tubular kind of sound, um, which if we speed it up a little bit, might be a little bit more apparent. Here, this sort of like putting a cardboard tube up to your mouth and like you did when you were a kid and speaking through it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay. And again, if you do some um, extreme values on here, you can get some extreme effects. You do some subtle things, you get subtle effects. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? So things are getting a little strange there. All right, last one. Take a look at reverb. All right, so reverberation. This is a fairly dry recording. It doesn't have a lot. You are getting some from the room that I'm in right now. You know, the sound is bouncing off the walls. So this is not perfect, but you're getting an idea. All right, so here is a sort of a typical preset here. We've got a decay time which is essentially the ver reverberant characteristic of the room writ large. Bigger rooms have bigger decay times. Pre-delay is amount of time between the sort of the, the uh, reverb and the direct time. And if this is short, the reverb sort of steps on the original sound, makes it less distinct. High frequency damping sort of corresponds to the amount of absorption you have in the room. Is this a room that's um, empty? You know, like you pull the furniture out because you're going to paint a room. It has that quality to it. It's kind of bright in the terms of the reverberation. Whereas if you had heavy curtains, carpet, upholstered furniture, furniture that tends to absorb high frequency content. Diffusion is really how complex the sound is in terms of um, the number of different surfaces that can bounce off of versus, you know, a room that has nothing in it. And it's just, you know, four bare walls. So a more complex, more interesting sound is increased diffusion. And then we have sort of an enclosure here. Hall is a big room. You know, room is a room, right? Normal size kind of room you would see in a house or what have you. And spring tries to emulate the old spring reverbs, for example, that you would see in uh, like a guitar amplifier. So that they all have their own kind of characteristic. So we're going to try this sort of middle of the road thing, a large room containing fat furniture, meaning it's got some high frequency damping. Notice how much this has gotten thicker and listen to it. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All right, original. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? And if we just redo that, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? So definite, definite different gets back our original. 
Um, try a couple of other ones here. Uh, so this this particular setting where he's attic bedroom with the hardwood floors and not much else is uh, you know a fairly short decay time. It's a small room. All right, same thing for the pre-delay. Um, not much high frequency damping because you know it's Larry's attic bedroom, right? Hardwood floors and not much else. So also not a lot of diffusion. There there aren't tables and chairs and things to bounce around the sound. So let's give this a listen. So we see a little bit of an increase in the signal. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? A, B, that. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? It's a very dry, close mic sound. In Larry's attic bedroom. What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay. Get back our original. We'll do one more. This can get pretty extreme. So if we go to, um, let's see here. Here we go. Large spooky cave with metal walls from a bad B movie. So it's a hall. It's a big, big place. High frequency damping is very low. Decay time is large at 10 seconds. Okay. Let's see what this sounds like. Ooh, look at all this stuff that was added. What about the job displacement market in the city in the future? We could call that heavy handed. <laughs> so depending on how you want to adjust that, you can get um, some extreme sorts of things, some very subtle sorts of things. There is one more thing that you can do. And that is you can go through this impulse modeling. We're going to take a look at this in a future video because it can do lots of different things. But if you have an impulse of a reverb, which you can, you can sort of approximate by um, taking a little handheld recorder, you know, going into the place like, uh, you know, a big uh, empty auditorium, um, maybe your garage, you know, uh, if there's not a lot in there, and just clap your hands. And when you do that, you'll hear this very reverberant sound, which ideally we would have a, a sort of an impulse generator do this, but your, your hands can be close enough, or maybe two blocks of wood you can snap together. And you can use that as an impulse response to drive through the sound. And what you'll get, if it's done correctly, if you have a decent impulse response, um, you'll get the sound you know, you're, you're recording over here as if it was in that place. But there's a lot more you can do with impulse modeling. You can create all kinds of crazy impulses um, that could, you know, um, I mentioned this before, that could, that could uh, respond to a filter, a very complicated filter, for example. Uh, but this is another way that you can actually make reverb. And it has different names. You know, some people call it acoustic modeling, um, acoustic mirroring, things like that. But these are some popular ones. They're all grouped together, right? So you can have, have a little bit of fun with those and sort of change the, the uh, general characteristic of the sound. Like I said, it's going to depend a lot on the source material. Is it voice? Is it a musical instrument? Is it an ensemble? You know, versus a solo instrument. You just have to kind of uh, get an ear for that, play with it, see what you have. All right? But definitely have some fun with it.